special purpose frameworks. Uh, we are going to cover two subunits within this module, special purpose frameworks and converting cash basis financial statements to the accrual basis one. So, let us start first with the special purpose framework. Let me first give you the overview. Uh, special purpose frameworks basically are accounting methods used in place of the normal gap, the normal generally accepted accounting principles. So, they are also referred to as OCBA, that is other comprehensive basis of accounting. So, where do we use them? We use them where gap is not required, but we need some reliable basis. So, in such situations where gap is not required, so we use OCBA, that is other comprehensive basis of accounting. Let us discuss some common types of special purpose framework. First, we have cash basis and modified cash basis. We will discuss this later on, but let me give you a basic idea. A cash basis accounting records revenues and expenses when cash is actually received or when the cash is actually paid. For example, uh, a small shop might use cash basis accounting only recording sales when customers actually pay cash, right? Or maybe they pay through card. But in modified cash basis, it is somewhat similar, but allows for few adjustments like uh, recognizing some assets or liability. For example, a small business using modified cash basis might record larger equipment as an asset instead of just expensing is out. Then we have another uh, type of special purpose framework that is tax basis. This basis uh, follows rules set by the tax authorities, that is IRS, meaning businesses will have to prepare the financial statements in a way that is in accordance with the uh, tax laws or tax reporting requirements. For example, a company might prepare its financial statement using tax rules to easily report income and expenses for tax filing purposes. So, that is basically the tax accounting. Then the third uh, uh, type of special purpose framework we have is the definite set of criteria that is prior level adjusted financial statements. We will discuss all these in detail. So, basically this refers to uh, a kind of financial statement that follow specific non-gap rules such as adjusting for price level changes. I hope you all of know inflation is a persistent increase in general price level. So, basically these are price level adjusted financial statements that have been adjusted for inflation. Like for example, a company uh, is operating in a country like in uh, a country which is which is historically uh, known to have very high inflation rate, Argentina. So, a company operating in Argentina, very high inflation country, it might adjust its financial statements to account for the changing price level, the changing value of money over time. Then we have another type, regulatory basis. Uh, some businesses, especially those that are engaged in providing utilities like electricity generation and distribution water distribution, right, uh, natural gas distribution. So, these are called regulated utilities. So, so some businesses like these regulated industries, they prepare their financial statements following some rules set by the government or by the regulator. So, you may say that these organizations, they will have to uh, follow an accounting framework that is required by the government regulators so as to report financial results in a specific they want. So, let us discuss these in finer details. Uh, but before we go further, uh, we need to know which of these four bases are most uh, widely used. So, I would say, not I would say, that is what the common practice is. Cash and modified cash basis and the tax basis, these are the two most widely used types of special purpose frameworks. Next, we have journal presentation guidelines. Uh, these are the guidelines that we need to follow when preparing financial statement using uh, other comprehensive basis of accounting, which of course, we discussed earlier, they, they differ from uh, the gap based statements. First, clearly label OCBOA statements. That means, the titles of financial statements that you are going to prepare, it must clearly show that these are not based on accrual accounting like US GAAP. So, users understand the basis of accounting uh, used like a statement title may say instead of a simple balance sheet, it may say balance sheet cash basis instead of just using the term balance sheet. Then we have uh, required statements under OCBOA financial statements should include documents that serve the same purpose like we need to have balance sheet and equivalent balance sheet on cash basis, income statement and equivalent income statement under the 
cash basis. So that, that's the basic idea that your financial statement under OCBOA should include documents that serve the same purpose as balance sheet and income statement in our regular GAAP based accounting. Like a business using cash basis might prepare statement of assets and liabilities instead of just using the traditional term balance sheet. Then explaining changes in equity. I'm sure you know what is the statement of changes in equity in our conventional financial statements. Uh, the financial statements should explain any changes in ownership or equity over the period of time. Like uh, if a business owner contributes some more capital in the business during the year, the financial statement should show and explain this change conventionally that we prepare in statement of changes in equity. Uh, it says no need for statement of cash flows. Yes, that's an important point to be noted. OCBOA do not require a cash flow statement since OCBO framework uh, is like a cash basis accounting. So already we have considered the direct impact of cash flows in the transaction. So we don't need statement of cash flows here. And then what are the disclosures required under OCBA? They are somewhat similar to the one we have in US GAAP. Like we need to disclose uh, or explain the accounting method used. Like we use cash basis or do we use tax basis? Uh, then we need to include details on financial items that are similar to those in US GAAP such as major expenses or major type of revenues that you have as a source of income. And then there are certain uh, items of information that are not shown directly in the financial statement such as uh, normally related party transactions are not reported on balance sheet or income statement or any events have happened that after the balance sheet period which we call subsequent uh, events which we discussed in the previous lecture. So these need to be disclosed. As we just discussed a little while ago that uh, the cash basis and modified cash basis, they are basically uh, alternative ways of recording financial information. So these methods are often used by smaller entities, of course, those that cannot uh, or shouldn't use the complete gap because they do not need to follow some complex accrual accounting. So let us discuss some basics of cash basis and modified cash basis financial statements. Uh, in cash basis accounting, transactions are only recorded when the cash is actually received or spent. As I gave you example a little while ago, let's, a small bakery only records sales when customers pay for their baked goods and it only records expenses when it actually pays cash for ingredients that are used in baking items. Uh, clearly, it's simple and easy. This method is straightforward, making it uh, mm, ideal for small businesses with simple operations like small shops or like freelance workers. But this is clearly not suited for complex businesses. Larger companies with more complicated operations like those with related to receivables, payables, inventory, asset management. So they may struggle with cash basis because it doesn't reflect the full picture of their financial situation. So in large organizations, we use accrual accounting. That's the accounting that we have been doing so far. Regarding modified cash basis, it's it's a kind of uh, a hybrid method. It starts with cash basis accounting, but allows some modifications to recognize certain long term items. Uh, we discussed a little while ago, such as an equipment or some loan taken. So this is uh, accounted for. For example, a small construction company might use modified cash basis. Uh, they might record equipment purchase as an asset rather than just expensing it out even though it uses cash basis for other transactions like uh, payments to its suppliers, collection from its customers, but the purchase of asset is recorded as an, ex uh, as an asset itself rather than expensing it out. Now let us dive deeper. Let us uh, discuss cash basis accounting in some sufficient detail. First of all, uh, as I've been saying, cash accounting is a simple way of uh, recording financial transactions where income is recorded when the cash is received and expenses are recorded when the cash is paid. So this method, as I said, doesn't consider accrual. It doesn't consider when the income is actually earned or when the expenses are incurred. Let us discuss uh, things further. Revenue and expenses, we know revenues uh, uh, are the business earning, but in cash based accounting, revenues are only recognized when the cash is received, not when the sale or service happens. Like if a lawyer uh, provides services in the month of December, but doesn't get paid until January, the revenue is recorded not in December when it is accrued. 
it is recorded in January when the cash is received. Similarly, expenses are recognized when the cash is paid. Like if a business uh, orders supplies in November but pays for them in December. So the expenses are recorded in December when the payment is made. So it's all about the cash. Next, uh, who are the common users of cash based accounting? Uh, this type of financial accounting or financial reporting is often used by uh, estates and trusts, uh, civic ventures, political campaigns, of course, which do not have full accounting system. So these entities typically have simple cash based transactions and they do not need to uh, maintain complex accrual based accounting. Types of financial statements in cash based accounting. All right, first, statement of cash and equity. In pure cash basis uh, financial statements, cash is the only asset recorded and, and no liabilities, debt or obligations are included. So as a result, equity is equal to cash. Interesting. Like, uh, let me give you some numbers to help you understand. Let's say a business uh, has $50,000 in cash and no other recorded asset or liability. So this 50000 is basically the equity, right? So next statement of cash receipts and disbursements. Uh, this statement shows like a kind of cash book. This statement shows all the cash coming in and all the cash going out during a period. So it would include what? It would include uh, money receipts from sale or services like cash from customers. It would include cash from loans or selling shares. Uh, it would include money from selling things like equipment or property cash spent on operating expenses like rent or utilities or salaries, uh, debt repayment clearly is the cash used to pay off the loans, uh, then uh, dividend payments clearly is a cash distribution to the shareholders and finally the payments to assets purchases that is the cash spent on buying new assets, equipments or vehicles or computers and so on. Next modified cash basis financial statements as I said a little while ago it's a, it's a hybrid accounting method that combines the aspects of both cash basis and accrual basis accounting. Uh, this method allows for some some adjustments some modifications to simple cash basis approach but still still it does not go for go far um, for a full accrual accounting that we are familiar with. So let us discuss some common modifications in modified cash basis. First, capitalizing and depreciating fixed assets. It means uh, uh, recording large purchases like if you purchase piece of machinery, equipment, building. So they are accounted for as assets rather than expenses. So then we depreciate it accordingly that we do in our conventional income statement like a company buys a machinery for let's say $50,000. So instead of uh, recording this as an expense immediately, they treat it as an asset and depreciate it over 5 years or 10 years, whatever the life of that asset might be. Uh, next, accrual of income taxes. That means accounting for taxes that have been incurred but not yet paid. That's accrual, clearly. We know, like uh, a company owes $5,000 in taxes by the end of the year, but they haven't yet paid it. So the company will record this as a liability in financial statement, like the normal liabilities we do in our conventional financial reporting. Recording liabilities for borrowing and interest. Uh, this modification includes recognizing money borrowed and the interest that is owed. Of course, when you borrow, you have to pay interest on the borrowing. Even the payment hasn't been made yet, so the interest is accrued. Like a business takes uh, out a loan for, let's say, $2,000 and for it, yeah, it has to pay $100 interest. So this $100 is an expense and $2,000 is a liability. Next, we have uh, capitalizing inventory. So, in, uh, normally what we do in cash basis, we expense it. But in, in modified cash basis, instead of immediately expensing the cost of items purchased, we treat it as an asset, as an inventory item until it is sold. Like uh, um, a retail store buys $10,000 worth of items to sell but it doesn't count as an expense until the items are sold that is like conventional accounting reporting investments at fair value 
and recognizing unrealized gains and losses. I'm sure this is the topic we have already discussed. Like a company holds uh, a certain stock, they have made investment for five thousand dollar, and uh, if the stock price goes up by the reporting date to by five hundred dollar, so this five hundred dollar would be reported as an gain, as an income. Clearly, clearly, it is an unrealized gain because it hasn't yet been earned. So the company still reports this as a gain, even though these securities haven't yet been sold. Uh, then we have an important area, presentation in modified cash basis financial statements. Statement of assets and liability, which is an equivalence of balance sheet. This is in fact the way we show assets and liabilities that have resulted from cash transactions, including any uh, modified item like fixed assets or any loans like, um, let's take some numbers to explain the idea. A business using modified cash basis may show its machinery at $60,000 that's paid and it's reported as an asset and a liability just we talk about a little ago $2,000 uh, against the loan even it hasn't yet been paid so that's the way we report it. Statement of revenues and expenses which is clearly uh, a kind of income statement in modified cash basis financial statements. So this statement would show the money collected and paid that is revenues and expenses but also includes modification like uh, the depreciation of the assets, taxes owed but not yet paid. Uh, consider a non-profit organization, it will record all the donations as revenues but also includes depreciation of the building they own, the computer equipment and furniture they own. So after cash basis and modified cash basis, we have uh, the income tax basis financial statements. Uh, well, as we discussed earlier, income tax basis financial statements are prepared using the same methods and rules as a company would use to prepare its tax returns. I'm sure all of we know how we prepare tax returns and the wealth statements. So, so this type of financial statement is particularly uh, useful for entities that have more complex operations than the previous one that we have discussed, like those that use cash basis or the modified cash basis system. So accounting issues in tax base, tax basis statements. As we just discussed a little while ago, tax basis financial statement, they follow the same rules as uh, we follow in tax returns as per the regulatory filing. So, so this means the way revenues and expenses are recognized depend on how they are treated for tax purpose under the tax rules. Special treatments for non-taxable items like certain revenues or expenses may not be taxed like uh, uh, certain interest income on specific bonds are not taxable. Uh, penalties imposed on the companies, uh, they are not tax deductible. So certain items, certain expenses or revenues, they may not be taxed and they, they need to be accounted for separately in financial statements. So these are called non-taxable items. Uh, how to prepare or how to report non-taxable item? There are various ways they can either be shown as a, as a separate line item in the revenue and expenses section like uh, a grant a business receives that is not taxable, it could be listed separately in the revenue section. Uh, second way is that they can be shown as a deduction or as an addition to net income, like if the company has income that is exempt from taxes, it may be deducted from the taxable income. And third way is that we may put it in the form of a note. They can be disclosed in a note in the financial statement, like uh, the financial statement might have a note explaining that certain revenues and, and uh, expenses are not subject to tax, thus they have not been included in the numbers that you see. Then we have a presentation of tax basis financial statements. First, statement of assets, liabilities and equity. This is kind of balance sheet. So this statement lists what the company owns, what company owes and the owner's equity. Means, In other words, assets, liabilities and equity based on tax rules. It is kind of similar to the balance sheet we know very well. Like a company might show equipment as an asset, loan as a liability, both calculated according to how they are reported on tax purposes. Statement of revenue expenses, which is equivalent of income statement. The statement uh, shows the company's revenues and expenses, that is money earned and money spent according to the tax basis, not as per the accrual accounting. And then, for example, let's say a, um, a retail store might report sales and business expenses like rent, 
salaries based on what is shown on the tax return as per the tax rules. And then finally, some specific elements uh, means uh, certain items that are shown in the tax basis financial statement will depend on how the company's tax return is prepared. This means any uh, income or deductions included in the tax return must also be reflected on the financial statement because the financial statement we are preparing are as per the tax rules. Next, we have converting cash basis financial statements to the accrual basis, the kind of accounting we know for long. Uh, as we discussed, many small businesses, they use cash basis of accounting for, for everyday operations because it's simple. It is straightforward. However, in some situations, uh, like maybe you are applying for a bank loan or maybe you are reporting to investors for funding or maybe just you are preparing for an IPO. So, you may have to switch from cash to accrual. So, so to make this switch, it is important to understand the key differences between cash basis and accrual basis accounting, which is nicely given in the form of a table on your screen. Revenue recognition occurs in cash basis when the cash is actually received. Revenue is recognized only when the money comes in. Like when a contractor finishes a particular project in December, but he gets paid in January. So, he would recognize revenue in January, not in December. But whereas uh, in accrual basis accounting, revenue is recognized when the services performed or goods are delivered, even if the payment hasn't yet been received. So, it means the revenue has been earned, even had it hasn't yet been received. That's accrual basis. Then expense recognition follows that in cash basis, expenses are recorded when cash is paid, only when cash is paid. But in accrual basis, Expenses are recorded when they are incurred or when they become due, even nothing has yet been paid or maybe we have received the benefit for those expenses, but money hasn't yet been paid. So, if, if the revenues are incurred or owed or benefit received, you need to book this as an expense, even cash hasn't yet been paid. Balance sheet conversion from cash to accrual basis. So, when you are converting uh, a cash basis in balance sheet into an accrual basis, you need to include all those assets, all those liabilities that were not accounted for in cash basis. Simple. So, this is because cash basis only records transactions that involve cash paid, cash received. What about many other transactions like incurring income, or incurring expenses not yet paid, earning revenue not yet received? That is what accrual accounting is all about. Because in accrual accounting, assets and liabilities must be recorded even if no cash has been received or no cash has been paid like uh, money owed to the business for accounts receive, uh, account receivable or any bills the business still needs to pay for accounts payable they are all included so let us see the steps that are involved in uh, converting a cash based balance sheet into accrual base key steps to convert from cash to accrual basis first add any missing assets assets that exist in your business but they are not recorded under cash basis accounting like inventory or fixed assets so they must be included add any missing liabilities liabilities such as debt payable or any taxes owed they need to be added as well and the differential of these is adjusted in equity so equity is adjusted to reflect the difference between the total assets and total liabilities to bring this accounting equation into action so you have adjusted your assets adjusted your liability the the equity would be the balancing figure to sort things out Let's move on to uh, the uh, discussion on the common balance sheet items that we add. First is the uh, account receivable. We know this is the money owed to the business from customers that hasn't yet been collected. Add them. Inventory items, goods uh, or products that we have purchased to sell, add them. Prepaid expenses, the payments we have already made for goods or services, but we, end, we haven't yet received them like rent or any payment made in advance comes as an asset. Investment and fair value, uh, investments are uh, reported at their current market price, not just the original cost that we paid. Then we have fixed assets, property, plan and equipment, buildings as they gradually expensed out over time. So, we need to report them on net basis, accounts payable, the money the business owes to suppliers for goods or services received, accrued liabilities means any expenses that have been incurred, but we haven't yet been we haven't yet paid them like wages to employees, uh, unearned revenue that is the income we have received, but we haven't yet earned interest payable. That means the interest on debt that is due. 
hasn't yet been paid, income tax is payable, that is the tax due not yet paid, and then other short term and long term debts. So, these are the adjustments to be made to draft a balance sheet based on the accrual accounting. Uh, next, we have uh, converting your cash based income statement to accrual based income statement. There are some steps and let me show you what you can do. Either you can use this vertical format where you can simply take in your cash based revenue, uh, add any uh, account receivable, deduct opening, add unearned revenue at the start, deduct unearned revenue at the end and this would give you the accrual basis. Uh, there is a convenient approach that we accountant would be quite comfortable with that is your T account format. So, this is a combined account of your account receivables and your unearned income or unearned revenue, opening unearned, closing unearned, of course, the liability, opening receivables, closing receivable, okay, cash collected against revenue, this one, cash collected from customers, the balancing figure here, this would be your accrual based revenue. So, whichever format you find comfortable, uh, you may uh, follow that. So, these two, either of these, they are used to convert your cash based revenue into accrual basis revenue. Similarly, we have uh, how to convert your cash paid for purchases to CGS or cost of goods sold. So, either may you, you can use this one where you take your cash paid to uh, to acquire uh, uh, inventory items, add ending accounts payable, deduct opening payable, add beginning inventory, deduct opening uh, uh, in, uh, ending inventory, you get CGS. And then there is an alternative way I will show you which you can use to find the same number that is a uh, bit suitable for those who are comfortable with T accounts. So, I have made this one accounts payable and inventory a combined account. You take your opening payable here, closing payable here, opening inventory, closing inventory. That is what you have paid. The balancing figure here would be the cost of goods sold. So, this is a quick way. You may use it if you find it comfortably. Otherwise, this vertical format would perfectly be well. Then the last one is cash paid for operating expenses to accrual based operating expenses. The idea is the same. So, just a revision. You take cash paid for operating expenses, add ending accruals, uh, deduct opening accruals, add beginning prepaid expenses and deduct closing prepaid expenses. I will show you the T format also. Uh, you may uh, f uh, find that one much bit uh, useful for you. Like operating expenses, some are prepaid, opening, prepaid, closing, opening due, closing due, the cash you have paid and this would give you the expense under the accrual accounting. So, whichever method you want to use, it will be perfectly fine. Then the final version, the converting cash based net income to accrual based. So, basically we combine all the previous three, the above adjustments and calculations can be combined to calculate accrual basis net income from cash basis net income. So, here we have some information, ABC company had cash collections 50,000, made, uh, made cash payment 20,000 and reported cash basis net income 30,000 for the year 6 company also determined uh, the following balance sheet amounts for the beginning and ending of year 6. ABC company also purchased a piece of equipment for 5000 in cash. That equipment has no salvage value and will be depreciated on straight line basis over 5 years. Compute ABC year 6 accrual basis revenue, expenses and net income. Let us do it. So, we are going to apply this format. We just learnt a little while ago. This exact this format I am going to apply and I will show you. So, we will take your cash based revenue. To this, you add your ending AR, deduct beginning AR, add beginning earned revenue and deduct the ending earned. Same numbers I am going to just add up and show you the results. So, you start off with your cash collections from customers, basically the cash based income. To this, you add your uh, account receivable at the end, deduct account receivable at the start, add unearned revenue which you have not yet received and deduct the previous. Just 5 items, you get absolute correct answer. I will show you in the next slide this one. Exactly. You can just pause the screen and match the numbers. Okay. So, that is what you have done and then it says uh, accrual basis income. Uh, we have done accrual based expenses. Let me show you what you are going to do. You start with the this 20,000. That is the cash payment. This is what you are going to do. Take your cash paid for operating expenses, add ending accrued liabilities, deduct opening, add beginning prepaid and deduct ending prepaid. So, I am going to just apply the same, just little adjustment for the asset we acquired and, and corresponding depreciation expense. Made cash payments during the period to this add closing due, salaries due, not yet paid, deduct the opening payable, add prepaid insurance at the start and deduct the uh, prepaid insurance at the end, just as per the same format. 
And now this is important. The asset that you've acquired this 5000 negative shown here, this is basically not an expense as such. 5000 that you have paid for cash is not an expense. Right? So from this total figure what you've got, you need to deduct this because this is not a cash uh, uh, payment for expenses. What is the cash pay, uh, what expense to be uh, recognized? Uh, $5,000 upon 5, 1,000 depreciation. That's what you need to add. That's the expense that you need to book. So if you add all these, uh, you would get this, 18,000. Remember, you need to deduct the capitalized fixed asset and add the depreciation and that's the accrual basis expenses. So you got the accrual basis expenses, you got the accrual basis income, so netting these two gives you the accrual based net income.